come back? Yes. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, seriously, I can't elaborate that enough. I mean, they, they, DX is, what, you need an extra light, X to, to really get out and get some DX. There's certainly DX to be had without it, but if you want to go after the country, you, you really need to get into the DXing frequency. 50 meters is very good during the daytime on the F2 layer. It's generally a daytime band only. If, and when there's low sunspots, it's almost non-existent. 12 meters, again, another high sunspot band. When, you, when we've got sunspots, and let me tell you, we've got sunspots now. We're right in the top of cycle 24 of what they call an 11 year cycle. This is probably closer to a 13 year cycle because we have about two years of zero sunspots. I mean zero, we have no sunspots for two years. This is building up. It's, they don't know when it's going to peak, but they're speculating it's going to peak maybe sometime next year. Then the sunspots numbers will start going back down again. And then it'll be another 11 years from now, or 12 or 13 years from now, before we get into high sunspot. And if you're interested in taking advantage of these bands and want to get out and work some DX, I highly recommend you get serious about doing this this year next year the year after is going to be your probably your prime time go ahead so field day should be pretty good with field day should be real good field day was real good last year yeah field day was okay the year before uh but field day should be real good this year for sunspot unless we have some solar activity which i'm going to talk about Moderate sunspots, we have very, very uh, low activity and 12 meters are really good just during the daytime. Yes, sir? Yeah, can you quantify what you mean by low, moderate, and high sunspots? I don't even mean the sunspot number, but I... I'm going to go through that kind of stuff towards the end of my presentation. Thank you for the question. I'm going to go through that in some detail. And if I don't exactly answer your question, ask it again, please. Low spots are generally a dead band. I'll just tell you, in general, uh, low, the sunspot number, if you're underneath 50, that's pretty low. If you're between 50 and 100, that's kind of medium. Anything above 100 is considered high sunspot, but, but kind of generally. But sunspot number isn't the only thing. As a matter of fact, it isn't as important as people think it is. There's things, there's other things that matter much more. Some sporadic E from late spring through summer and midwinter for 12 meters. And again, this is another work band. This is the last of the three work bands. 30 meters, 17 meters, and 12 meters of the work band. When they're high sunspots, 12 meters is fabulous. I mean, it is fabulous. You can work the world. You can work the world with 100 milliwatts on a dipole. When sunspots are high and 12 and 10 meters are open. Absolutely, it's just fabulous. Last night, Instead of being on the radio, I was working on my presentation, but uh, the guys in the club said 20 meters is the best they've seen it in years. It was hot. It was great last night. Really good, really good. But I was out at 7 QP uh, Saturday night, 40 meters were fabulous. I mean, there's, this is a great time to be on the air. If you if you want to get into the DX scene and you've been putting it off, putting it off, or afraid to, or whatever, just contact somebody that you know is good. We'll help you. We'll, we'll give you direction. Just what kind of rig you got, what kind of antenna you got, what time of day is it, what to get it here, you can point. If you, can, if you can turn your dipole or restring your wire or something, 
the best place, the be people ask me, what are, where's the, what's the best place to put an antenna? You've got a fixed antenna like Chad was asking me the other day. If you have a dipole, and if you can only set it up for one location, set it up for northeast. In other words, put your put one end of your dipole northwest and the other end of your dipole southeast. And that means your antenna is pointing to Europe and to Asia. Follow me? You're going to get a lot of DX working Europe and Asia. A lot of DX. Uh, Asia is better. In the afternoon, Asia is, Asia is terrific. I remember I had my license. I'd never worked any DX. I had my license for a year, and I said, I was asking one of the guys, I said, how can I work some DX? He says, just in the afternoon, look for Japan. Well, I've got so many Japanese QSL cars now. <laughs> when, I work these, when I work these contests and I see uh, Section 25, I don't even answer them. I mean, I just, too, too much. It was too much. Was, you got to be careful what you ask for, I guess. <laughs> Japan's the easy one. But Japan is right next door to China and Thailand and Philippines and a lot of countries out there that don't have a lot of operators like they have in Japan. There's lots and lots of, of stations you can work out in the West. But I implore you, if you have any interest in working DX, get on the air soon, this year, next year. It's the best it's going to be for the next 11 years. And some of us aren't going to be as active as we are <laughs> in 11 years. Right, John? <laughs> You'll still be here, John. We just don't know what shape you'll be in.